One thing we all have in common, and even the richest people don't have more of, is time. We all have the same amount of hours during the day. However, it is so often that I talk to co-founders and tech executives, and they're busy telling me that they cannot do things because they're so stressed for time. They don't have the time to do it. Um, this week is hectic. I'm overwhelmed. Whatever you want to say. However, those are all lies. And the reason is that at the end of the day, your time, how you choose to spend it, is how you show your priorities to the world. And when you're saying, I don't have time for that, you're saying, I'm not prioritizing that enough. If you're not making the time for something, it's because you're deciding to give your time to something else. A crisis happens and all of a sudden you do have time, right? Or what happens if all of a sudden you're sick or you're going to go to the hospital if needed or you're going to take care of your kids if they're sick, right? And if you're able to do that, that means that there is time and you can prioritize things differently. Now, with that in mind, I want to speak to how this is something that maybe you're not aware of, but I can guarantee that everyone else in your team is. And when they see that you're not putting your time where your mouth is, they will realize that what you're saying doesn't necessarily go hand in hand with what you actually value. And that in turn will mean that they will not be as committed, that they will see that there's a honesty gap between what you say and what you actually think, your trust in the company will be chafed with time and you don't want to do that. So let's talk about how do you take control of your time and where you should be wielding it very, very intently, okay? And intentionally deciding where you're going to be spending your time. First, just to make you understand how easy it is to see that even the busiest people on earth have time to do things that seem less important. How many times have you seen photo ops of politicians who, you know, even during wartime here in Israel, Zelensky, go and meet people who you look at, and, okay, they're just meeting, you know, the regular Joe, they're meeting citizens, they're going to meetings that don't seem to matter with all sorts of other, you know, 10th grade politicians. Why are they doing that? because they know what you might not have grasped. How you spend your time has a direct impact on how you are viewed and how people understand what is important for you. And if you need people's support, yeah, you're not an elected official, but you do need your organization's trust and support to be effective. And you need to show them that you're spending the time where it matters. And let's now go through a few of the areas where I see executives missing on the ability to spend a bit more time and get a lot of positive impact for the organization. If you're looking at your time spent as in the ROI, the return on investment you're going to have, these are things that maybe are where you need to be looking at to get, use your time better, okay? Not just try and cut everything. So First of all, and this is the easiest one I always say, is look at projects. When a company tells me when they start the year, when they start a quarter, these are priorities, these are the objectives, and then I look at their projects, look at their teams, look at the actual work that they're doing, and I don't see a connection, a direct traceability from this is the important thing to here are the people working on this important thing, I immediately know that something here is out of sync. And your team sees that as well. If you just spent an all hand saying how, it is, how Project X is so important, and yet once the all hands is done, they look at their tasks for the month and they realize we're not going to be working on it, they understand that probably Project X isn't that important or you're really bad at leadership, one of those. I'm guessing you don't want to be communicating neither. So... Consider your projects. Where do you have this disconnect? I routinely see people, and I just had one a few months ago, where I talked to the founder of a startup. He told me what the critical, the most critical thing for the company was for the year. And then he said, wait, I don't see that anywhere in the org chart. You just showed me that's split into the different objectives you want to reach. And he's like, 
Yeah, you're right. That's interesting. So, you know, I see that all the time. And another with a CEO who's, who told me our most critical asset is being able to do this. I'm not going to go into what because that might help you realize what company you're talking about. I'm like, okay, how, how does that translate to actions in, real, in the real world? What are you doing? He's like, no, we haven't actually done that yet. Someone, you know, our CTO sometimes does a few days concentrate into that effort every couple of months. I'm like, okay, so that's not the most important thing or you're, again, not doing your job. So look at projects. Next, we tend to look at meetings as one group, massless time wastes. However, meetings, as bad as they can be, are not all the same and you need to think about which ones you decide to spend your time in and how. For example, if we're setting up a new organization, if we're getting a new team, if we're hiring some specific important people to key roles, I don't view those interviews just as any other meeting. And you and your leadership team should take part in critical interview processes for important people, even if they're not going to be leaders or managers, even if they're just senior ICs, to show that you care and ensure that the right people with the right alignment will be brought in. Similarly, once you have people brought in, you and your leadership team should be available for them during onboarding. That's how you show people that you actually care about them, that you actually care about the people you're hiring. You're making time to be with them. Add to that that during time, you should be having regular one-on-ones with people, even skip level one-on-ones with people who you don't directly manage. Because again, this shows how much they mean to you. And it has a whole set of benefits that maybe I'll go into in a different video. But when I see leaders who routinely tell me, yeah, I've been neglecting one-on-ones lately. Yeah, I've been canceling them, shortening them for months. What do you think that tells your people about how much you care about them, about how much important they are to you? I don't care how much you're going to repeat the fact that you can only allow yourself to do that because they're so good at what they do, because you trust them so much. At the end of the day, if you don't make the time to spend quality one-on-one time with them, you're setting the message. You're just telling them that they don't matter that much and you have way more important things to do. And if they look at your calendar and they see that the more important thing tends to be over useless meetings, they're going to be offended after a while. So don't do that. Next, I see people constantly talking about how important it is to create a center of excellence organization in which there are two things that are always critical. Learning as a learning organization that continuously learns and having innovation. How much time are you actually making for that? Are you telling your people to not waste time on postmortems? Are you never attending postmortems even when there was a big outage, a big mistake, because your time is too important to make sure that the learning is being done properly? Or are you spending your time in postmortems showing everyone how critical it is for us as an organization to learn together? Again, similarly to postmortems, we have innovation when it comes to how much time the team is allowed to spend on experiments, on things that aren't just ready-made, regular tasks that they just execute on one after the other, but actual work that might not succeed. That's what innovation is about. Innovation is about taking some risks, having experiments, maybe failing from time to time because that's the way it is. No risk, no reward. And if you never have that, if you don't allow people to fail, if you say, yeah, let's be innovative, but when someone's idea fails, you then hold them accountable. They see that all fingers are pointing at them. They are to blame. What do you think that tells them about innovation? So spend actual time on real innovation, make time for it, let people do that, show them that you care about it. Otherwise, don't claim to be an innovative center of excellence, best of breed, whatever buzzword you want to use for organization because you ain't. And lastly, I think it's also important to make time to gain product understanding and maintain it. 
Are you spending time seeing how clients use the, the product, for example, learning about your competitors, learning about the market? You and your entire organization need to be doing that because product mastery is something that even if you've gained it, you can lose it with time. You can lose your connection to the real world because you're so heads down shipping and working because the real world is moving so fast. Eventually, your snapshot of what the market was two years ago will no longer be valid. So many things have changed. Your product might have become so convoluted with time, but you never realized it like the frog boiling slowly in the pot. You don't want to be there. You need to constantly chant, constantly be in sync with clients, with the outside world. Get some external perspective. And when you do that, you'll be able to have your finger on the pulse and know what's happening. Okay? So spend your time wisely. If you're spending time right now watching a video to become a better leader, that's amazing. I'm, I'm not being cynical. However, how are you going to leverage that? What are you going to now be doing to ensure that this is not a one-time thing, but actually translates into real-world actions? So your people see how you spend the time that you have on what actually matters, and then can trust you to be always be on their on their side. Similarly, you only have so many hours in the day, you only have so many weeks and months in your role. If you actually use your time intentionally thinking, where should I be spent? Where am I getting the best ROI? What's the most important way, the important thing for me to do right now so my team sees it and understands and then they will replicate the same thinking. If you have that in mind, you'll be able to create a team that's not just going through the motions day after day, but that's actually innovative, actually productive, effective in a way that nowadays, I'm sorry to say, is becoming rarer by the minute. So do that, take a hold of your time, and you're going to be in charge of an organization worth leading. And at the end of the day, what else can you strive for? If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Let me know your thoughts. And make sure to check out the Hot Stuff playlist because it's got a bunch of new material that I think you're going to find valuable and a good use of your time. Thank you. Ciao.